This is Jean-Yves Le Boudet, a professor of the IC School at EPFL. In general, renewable energy sources are stochastic, random. They produce depending on the weather. And in the case of solar photovoltaic, the variability can be very high. If there are clouds that come, you can lose 30 to 60% of the production within seconds. So that's one first aspect. The big trouble of the energy sector is that energy cannot be stored. Making sure that the huge production of solar panels at peak hours is not wasted is one of the key aspects of smart grids. But in fact, it's not just a matter of waste. In addition to the variability, another problem that this may pose is the ability of the existing grid to support such uh, added generation. Let's give an example. To illustrate, we have a case in Switzerland of a, a company that has a huge roof on which they are installing 8 megawatts of solar panels, which produces very high peak power. And the trouble is the transport of this energy. The company is located at the end of an electrical distribution network that was designed many, many years ago uh, without having the idea that there would be such a huge power flow coming from the company as opposed to being consumed by the company. Uh, we did some simulations of the power flows on this grid and we find that there will be congestion. The, current on some of the lines will be too high. So there will be a damage to the lines if we let those 8 megawatts come at any point in time as they uh, occur depending on the sun. But this is not all. A uh, third cause that we are likely to see in, in many countries is the uh, emergence of electric plug-in vehicles. So when you charge a vehicle, either hybrid or pure electric, the consumption is huge compared to the grid. So it's the opposite of the solar panels that all of a sudden create a huge production, which is completely unexpected. Then you may have the opposite. You may have a huge consumption. More generally, electrical grids are a network that allow to transport produced energy to consumption nodes. And changes in the energy sector imply changes in energy production, in energy consumption, and as well in stresses on electrical lines. So the classic solution to that problem would be to uh, improve the grid. So do more constructions, add, uh, put new transformers or upgrade some of the lines, but this has very, very large costs for things that are fluctuating and not present always. So upgrading the electrical grid is not always an option. So what can be done? So there are alternatives that are to compensate uh, the, those flows, maybe to use uh, what is called demand response. Wait, what's a demand response? Demand response means that we could perhaps move the point in time where some consumptions are happening. Let's give an example. For example, if the peak load is uh, around noon time, there are perhaps two, three hours of the day where there is too much power being generated by the solar panels. Perhaps it is possible to increase the consumption of things that would naturally consume energy and make sure it happens just at this time. For example, if you are using power to for deep freezers, for air conditioning, for heat pumps, you could use more of this at exactly this time. So synchronize the loads with the excess power. This is an example of what is called demand side management or active demands. This corresponds to adjusting the consumption with the production in real time. We can play also in extreme cases with uh, curtailment. We can, for example, stop uh, solar panels if the excess power would damage the grid. This may seem counterproductive, but this is, in some cases, it's economical to install a, for a peak production that during the peak of the summer would be in excess, so has a risk of being curtailed, but in average during the year would, uh, would not be in excess, so that's also a possibility. Again, you don't want to damage the grid. And last, we can also use uh, storage systems that are 
typically today batteries specially developed for grid applications that are able to both consume and produce depending on what we instruct them to do. So batteries are able to, with today's technology, to store energy at the time scale of a day or or several days. As you can guess, battery storage is a crucial component of smart grids, which can hugely improve our way to manage energy. The battery is a sector where we see also rapid changes. This is witnessed by the Tesla industry um, that has uh, invested a lot on batteries. But in Switzerland, we also have a company that's very important, Le Clancher, that is in in Yverdon, close to Lausanne, where this company is developing very innovative technologies for producing batteries for grids. And this, we have one on the campus, we have a container uh, close to here where we are uh, making experiments with this battery to do things like run a part of the campus uh, autonomously by compensated on the uncertainties with this battery. So batteries like this one are going to be deployed in many, many places in the world. I mentioned the cases where we have a grid that is too weak to be able to absorb a very high peak solar power. That's a case where similar batteries will be deployed. Other cases in other transmission grids is, for example, avoiding making a new high voltage line between north of Europe and south of Europe to transfer the excess wind energy, for example. You store it when the, when the peak production occurs and the demand is not very high. You store it uh, in, in batteries and then you drain those batteries at uh, off-peak hour to, to move them to other batteries or other places uh, in Europe where they will be used. The smart grid enables newer technologies to be integrated, such as wind and solar energy production and plug-in electric vehicle charging. Well, it is an optimization problem, uh, which is nasty in some sense. 